Once upon a time, very recently, I used to have a lot of respect for a man called Barak Mluka. Not anymore. One thing I need to tell you about myself, I get very nervous, yeah, when I meet a person or when I see a person who's trying to rewrite history, to skew history to their advantage, yeah, to change history, to change things the way they really are, to suit their point or to suit what they want to portray. Case in point, Barak Moluka has told us on national television that Raila Odinga has a long history yeah, of betrayal, of betraying others. Okay? Now, let's just leave that point aside. Yeah? I'm not going to argue on that. But there's, is a, there's one historical fact that he excuses, changes, distorts. Now, he says, he gave one of the examples, is that when Charity Ngilu, the late Michael Kijana Wamalwa and Mwai Kibaki formed a pact, formed a coalition to remove Moi from power in 2002, yeah, they believed Raila Odinga was with them. And uh, meanwhile, what Raila Odinga was doing, he was having a meeting with Moi at his Kabarak home, yeah, or at his home in Nairobi, I'm not sure which he was referring to, yeah, Kabarnet Gardens in Nairobi, yeah. Now, that is a lie. And I'll tell you why. It's really very simple. When these three Kenyans were forming the National Alliance, yeah, it was initially called, I think, the National Alliance of Kenya, yeah? Charity Ngelu, Mwai Kibaki, and the late Michael Kijana Wamalwa, Raila was in government. So, meeting with Moy was not strange, yeah? Let me remind Banabarak uh, Moluka, maybe he's getting very old, he can't remember. Okay? What, was, what had happened is that uh, Raila Odinga's NDP, National uh, Development Party, yeah, had gone into a merger with Kanu. Raila was in Kanu. Raila was in government. Indeed, Raila was a cabinet minister in government. It was only later... When Moy announced that Huru Kenyatta was the candidate for Kanu, yeah, was his heir, yeah, for uh, president of Kanu, that there was a fallout in government. And after that fallout, uh, not only Raila Odinga, George Saitoti, a lot of people, yeah, crossed the floor and went and joined the opposition. And in joining the opposition, they merged, okay, with uh, this outfit of Charity Ngilu, Mwai Kibaki and Michael Kijana Omalwa. Okay? So, Barak Muluka told lies on national television. What the example he gave <laughs> is just pure lies. Like a lot of the lies he has been peddling on uh, national television. Now, Edwin Sufuna has given us more information. He has told us that they were all aware that uh, Kalozo Msioka Msali Mdavadi and Wetangul had no intention of attending Raila Odinga swearing in. Yeah? They had no intention. So where does the betrayal come in? If already it was widely known that those people had no intention to attend the swearing in, how does betrayal come in? Anyway, Sfuna gives us a very interesting nugget of information. He tells us on that 30th of January, they tried everything in their power. Yeah? And he even confesses it was selfish. They felt as the Luya nation, they should be represented. And therefore they felt they should do everything possible, even if it was carrying Musalim Davadi by force and delivering him to Hurupak. Yeah, they tried. But guess who frustrated their efforts? Barak Muluka. Now, <laughs> the agenda of Barak Muluka is very simple. He's the Secretary General of the Amani Party. And he's trying to resurrect the political career of his party boss. Yeah? Now talk about doing something impossible. Talk about trying to resurrect a dead body and you're not Jesus Christ. <laughs> and to make matters worse, Bonabarak Maluka has no fear of God. He's invoking the name of God in his lies. That is just... <laughs> I don't know. That is just sending a chill up my spine. My brother, do you know what you're doing? Now, the problem with lies is that once you have started telling them, you can't stop. Yeah? Because it's very shameful to confess that all that drama, 
all that very convincing rhetoric was all nothing but pure lies. Actually, lies are not pure. Blatant lies. And so you are forced to peddle, generate new lies to support the old lies. The great King David slept with somebody's wife. Yeah. And so he tried very hard to cover this initial sin. Okay. Send the guy home, hope he sleeps with his wife so that people think the child is uh, his, blah, blah, blah. The guy didn't. It didn't work. So finally, he was forced to commit murder. Yeah, he got this poor guy, Uriah, killed. And it is, a, it is the same danger with lies. If you don't stop, you'll end up in a very bad place where you'll commit an even bigger crime, an even bigger sin than the lies you're telling Kenyans. It is even better just to keep quiet and disappear from the scene. Stop talking to TV stations, stop talking to the media, just keep quiet. But I know this advice these guys will not follow. Yeah, These liars are very persistent, they will not give up, they will not let up. The latest revelation comes from Buona Filipe Tale, who is the communication director of uh, ODM. Yeah? He has told us that some of the propaganda we have seen in the media yeah, was actually not generated by the 36 bloggers, as I even I thought initially. Yeah, it was actually courtesy of Buona Barak Muluka. He went, he approached the media, told them, do you want some inside information on what's going on? Blah, 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 blah. All blatant lies. Now, fortunately, the standard group did not fall for these lies. Okay? And that tells you something about your newspapers, folks. Doesn't it? Even uh, Senator James Orengo has now come out and asked the nation to apologize for the blatant lies they're peddling on, uh, in a national newspaper about ODM and about what's going on. Oh, boy. Anyway, I think it's going to be quite a show. It's going to be quite a Churchill drama <laughs> eh? uh, comedy show as uh, we see people trying to resurrect a dead body. And they're not Jesus Christ. Yeah, they're not God. And this person is dead. Dead, dead. And I'm talking about the political careers of some people. You know them. Those careers are gone. Quisha, kaput. Someone told me not to use that word. Lakini meisha kabisa, kabisa. It cannot be resurrected. And guess what? Those people on life support, their political careers on life support, it was possible to resurrect them. But now, thanks to the work of people like Barak Muluka, wamekufa kabisa. They are no longer an ICU. They are certified dead. And I'm talking about the political careers of those individuals. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha.